Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here, and in today's video, I want to talk about the game Crypt of the Necrodancer Cadence of Hyrule. Now, this is a rhythm based game, and I'm not really big into rhythm based games. I play Guitar Hero and Rock Band like every other person on the planet, at least once or twice. Um, but when I, this game was announced, I really wasn't excited for it. I was just kind of like, you know what? I'm just, I'm gonna pass on this. I don't like my gameplay being limited to beats and music, and I just didn't think it would be a good idea. And so, game was released, time passed, I just was not interested. And then I looked at a video on YouTube, and I watched it a little bit, a little bit of gameplay, and I said to myself, you know what, this might not be too bad. And the game's only $25, so you know what, it's Zelda themed, so let's just buy it and see what happens. And so I was very skeptical going in. I didn't really think it would be that good of a game. I thought it would just kind of be some other game just with a Zelda skin on top of it with a few Zelda playable characters. But let me tell you, I was very wrong. And so like I said, the main premise of this game is you move according to the beat of the music. Now the music selection I think in this game is just tremendous. There's a lot of Link to the Past melodies and remixes. And that's kind of really what the game took a lot of inspiration from was Link to the Past. Uh, a lot of items were used from A Link to the Past, um, some enemies, and I just think it was really good. They really did a great job with the music, and I found myself humming these tunes um, throughout, you know, every day. And so, music, definitely a good choice, and it should be, because it's a rhythm-based game. If the music will be bad, well, then the whole game will be terrible. Now, having your movement being restricted to the music and the beat wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, and there's actually a mode where you can disable that, um, because... If you do move according to the beat, you get a multiplier, you can deal more damage, blah, blah, blah. Uh, explains it a lot more in the game. Um, but you're encouraged to move according to the beat and you're rewarded based on that. Um, but there is an option to remove that if you're really having trouble. So that was nice. Um, I never used that because, you know, I like to think I have pretty good internal tempo and can move according to beats and stuff. Um, so I enjoy the game without having to turn that off. But besides the movement, the gameplay is not drastically different than normal Zelda's, but it is different you attack just by moving toward an enemy. You don't have to press a button to swing your sword. Um, there are buttons assigned to items, but your sword is just swung automatically or your mace or your spear, javelin. Um, there's a broad sword. There's all kinds of weapons in the game. They all do different things. Um, there's different categories of weapons and uh, you can alter the, uh, alter the weapons throughout the game in different ways. I don't want to spoil too much just in case somebody hasn't played it. Um, but the weapon mechanics are a lot different than a normal Zelda game. Now as far as other weapons, I'm not going to try to spoil too much, like I said, in case somebody hasn't played it, but you can see through some of the screen capture that there are a lot of items in this game, and I was thoroughly surprised and thoroughly pleased with the different wide array of items. I was not expecting, um, you know, some of these items to be in here, like the hook shot or the long shot, the cane of Samaria, all of these weapons, I, I just fully did not expect this all to be in here. This game has a lot more content than what I expected. Um, and kind of across the board, I was just overly impressed. Because I, I honestly, I went in with expectations not being that high. Because I was like, you know what? It's a third party Zelda influence game. is not going to be great. But I would be fully confident in giving that studio um, license to make another game just like this. Because this one was really good. Now the enemies have an interesting difficulty curve. Because I think it's a lot harder at the beginning of the game just to get going. You can pretty much visit all of the overworld from the beginning. Uh, there's only a couple of panels that might be blocked off from your access, but I just think because your heart containers are low in the beginning, it's a lot easier to die in the beginning. When I first started playing this, I was dying all the time, um, but as I increased my heart containers, um, it wasn't nearly as hard. It was still hard to an extent, um, but it, I died a lot less further on in the game than the beginning. And also because I maybe was getting used to the mechanics, um, but there is an option to play as Zelda, and in my opinion, that is a lot harder to play through. Because with Link, you can get a shield that you can use infinitely. But with Zelda, you have Nehru's Love, which has finite uses, and you had to build your magic power back up. And it's just a harder experience. Um, you can play the game different ways. You can play it two player, you can play it single player, rotating characters, um, one player throughout the whole, like one single character throughout the whole game. Um, and then the other nice thing is that the whole world is randomized. So each time you play it, you can have a different overworld map. And so this game has pretty much infinite replayability. And I really think that maybe Nintendo should take some pointers from this because things like 
uh, Ocarina of Time randomizer, Wind Waker randomizer, Majora's Mask randomizer, Link to the Past. Those are all pretty popular right now. And people like the idea of having just a randomized game, randomized loot set, and randomized map. And so that maybe wouldn't be a bad idea for Nintendo to implement in some of their first title games, first party title games, just saying. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have it as an option. And now there's just a few things that, it's not that I don't like about the game, I just don't like how the mechanics work. Um, every time you die, uh, certain items disappear. Um, your rubies all disappear. Torches and shovels and any rings that can kind of enhance your powers. Um, it's a nice little throwback to Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons, the use of rings. Um, but every time you die, you lose that stuff. Now your main items you get, like uh, your bow and arrow, um, the different types of arrows, hookshot, those stay in your inventory. But things like the shovel and the torches, there's different varieties of those, but whenever you die, you lose them. Um, so I kind of wish you didn't, especially the shovel, because I have gotten into circumstances where you know I need a shovel, but the game's pretty good about giving you one if you need one. Um, just go kill a few other enemies and they'll drop a shovel. Um, the game kind of knows you need one to progress throughout the levels. Um, so that's a very minor thing that I didn't really like. Um, but by the end of the game, Oz had so many rubies that I didn't really know what to do with them because uh, there's only so many, so many things you can buy in the different dungeons. Um, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. But it's just one little thing that if I could prefer to change, I would change that I wouldn't lose shovels and torches all the time. Um, and shovels and torches do have durability, which isn't a bad thing. Um, it's just a little frustrating whenever you die and you lose it if it was a full durability and you're in the middle of doing something. And there are Sheikah Slates all throughout the overworld, so you can teleport between different sections of the map, which is extremely handy. Um, you can teleport from one end to the other. There's plenty of teleport spots. And so they made it easy to travel around the map quickly, which is important because there's a lot of stuff to do in the overworld. Um, a lot of dungeons, little mini dungeons. Um, and I just think they overall did a really good job. And if you're on the fence about this game, I just fully recommend that you just give it a try. It's only $25. It's totally worth it. And from somebody who was a skeptic going in, you know, I was full-blown skeptic. Like, this game, it's not going to be great. I was blown away by how good this game was. Um, like I said, the music, item selection, the difficulty was good. Um, not too bad of a story either. Um, and the ability to play as Link, Zelda, and Cadence wasn't a bad deal either. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to make a video talking about Cadence of Hyrule because I was surprised by it. I really enjoy it. Lots of replayability. I know it's kind of late because it's been out for like three months. Uh, but it's a video I wanted to get done. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, if you do check out Canes of Hyrule, let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. And also, please subscribe for more videos coming from me. They're hopefully going to be coming on a more regular basis. Uh, make sure you follow my Twitter account, Tyler Miller TV, as well as Instagram. And I'm starting to stream here on the YouTube channel more now, rather than over on Twitch. I know I've been back and forth, but I think I'm going to be on YouTube to stay for the time being. That's enough rambling. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Stay tuned for live streams. I announce them on Twitter, and usually they're on Sunday evenings around 8 or 8.30. But that's it for this one. Thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.